Okay, I had a whole different video plan for today, but then I saw Strymon drop the digital version of the El Capistan pedal, and here's the thing. I just don't want to see you wasting $79, so I'm going to show you how to create the exact same thing for free, plus break down what these plugins are really doing behind the scenes, and how to listen for their effects and improve upon them so that they work exactly how you envision. Sound good? Let's dive into it. I'm going to walk you through how to test, troubleshoot, and plan your own recreations from scratch, but if you're just here for a quick tutorial on the pedal, skip to the timestamp below. Now, if you're in even more of a rush and you just want the ready-made plugin, you can grab it from the Patreon. It's gonna cost you about the same as a cup of coffee, but you're gonna get access to over 200 exclusive post devices and templates too, and it really does help support the show. So let's first talk about Strymon. On September 3rd, the forums, YouTube, Reddit, they were all buzzing about Strymon's new plugin release, which is cool. But whilst everybody was celebrating, my first thought is, is this more than just a fancy delay? And yeah, it is. But unlike complex pedals like the Microcosm or Nightverb, which I can't wait to get my hands on, by the way, the effects are pretty straightforward. It's almost laid out like a step-by-step -step guide for a plugin chain. Here's another thing. Plugin companies often build these digital counterparts of the hardware for musicians who maybe don't have the production know-how to make the sounds themselves. So they package it up nicely for $79 instead of $379. You save money and you get the effects immediately, which is great. But if I told you, hey, just wait 10 more minutes, you could get the same sound for free, it would be a no-brainer, right? We're agreed. Let's dig in a little bit deeper. So first, how do you decide if the plugin is worth buying? Most of them have free trials, so that's where I start. Skip the presets, turn the wet to 100%, and then individually turn each knob. And just really listen to what's being affected. Can you identify those effects? Is it a phaser, chorus, delay, reverb? Map out in your mind or a scrap of paper what's going on and think about how you would recreate it. I want to be able to create my own audio effect rack, and at first glance we might think that we only have 16 macros to work with, but with subgroups, basically the possibilities are endless. So plan out your master macros, which will oversee the subcontrols. These are genuinely my notes from earlier today, but I've made a cleaner, clearer version for you guys. My pink macros on screen are masters, green and yellow are subs. Easy. By this point, I usually know if something can be recreated. The only tricky part here is understanding what those heads might be and the quirky freeze and kill switches. All right, enough talk. Let's jump into recreating this device so you guys can see just how doable it is. If you're ready, follow me. So first off, you want to keep El Capistan on screen so you can reference it. Next, we'll create a new audio track with a nice clean loop inside and an audio effects rack. The rack is gonna need two chains, one for our dry frequency and one for our wet. Let's assign 14 macros, open the chain selector, right click that chain selector and map it to macro seven. Grab this little white bracket at the top here and drag it towards the dry frequency and then go the opposite way with the wet frequency. We now have a fade in and a fade out that we can control with our chain selector. That's one of 14 already taken care of. We may as well take the time to name all of these macros as well so we know what we're assigning things to. I'm basically gonna copy all the titles on the El Capistan plugin, but you can name them what you want. Next up, we'll drag in our delays. And for this, we're going to be using two different delays in Ableton, the standard one and the filter delay. Select them both and hit Command or Control G to throw them into a group. We're gonna work on the delays for a while, but for ease, let's go through the rest of the devices we'll need, and then we'll keep them bypassed until we use them. So first up, let's go for a spring reverb. Our delay group is good to go. Utility, EQ8, Cabinet, Chorus Ensemble. We're going to have another Chorus Ensemble with a Shaper device, and that will be grouped as well. Then finally, an amp. And as I said, let's keep everything bypassed and minimized until we need it. How do I know it's these devices specifically and in what order? To be honest, it comes down to some trial and error and time spent in the game, but often you can use an EQ or Spectrum device on your demo plugin and note down what changes you're seeing in the frequency bands. I know I'm gonna need some kind of filter delay because when I cycle through the machine types from single moving, single fixed to multi fixed, I can hear and see those brighter frequencies being added or dulled in the mix. Make it easy on yourself and add 16 macros inside the delay group. Name it if you want to, because it will make it clearer should you want to make any adjustments in future. First up, let's look at tempo. It's a nice, easy one to set up because all we're doing is switching between beat sync and free time. So what we can do here is right click 
and set sync to macro one. And we'll do the same for the sync buttons over here. We can also turn off L and R on the filter delay. So macro one over here, that's gonna be our tempo. And we can right click that and map that to tempo. So that's mapped it over to this tempo here. Nice, easy one. They won't all be this straightforward, but that gives you a good idea as to what's going on. We have one macro control in another macro over here inside a group. The next macro time is interesting. You can also call this tape speed in the El Capistan plugin. We want to control the delays time independently for each tape head. And for that, we can kind of copy the El Capistan settings because they've left it on screen for us. So we can see here at a minimum, we're gonna have three heads, 60 milliseconds, 120 and 180, and at a maximum 300 milliseconds, 600 milliseconds and 900 milliseconds. And we can move in these integrants with our device as well, just copy these settings on screen. So with tempo, make sure it's not set to sync and it's set to free time. Come over to milliseconds, right click and map that to macro two. Our next time we're actually gonna to map to macro three, and our next time we're actually gonna map macro four. We're gonna do that exact same thing when we set it to sync, but this time macro 10, macro 11, and macro 12. Now inside the delay group you have map, we're gonna come up to tempo, and we're gonna change some of these settings for time and for sync. Remember our minimum time is just gonna be 60, 120, and 180. So for L time, we're gonna do 60, and its maximum time will be 300 milliseconds. So this top time here, what you want to have is 120 and 600, and the one in the middle is gonna be 180 and 900. We're gonna map these three top macros to time, all to the same pot. And if you close your chain, drag tempo to the left so it's on free time, and time all the way to the left, you'll see 60, 120, and 180. We have to do the same with sync time. So drag that tempo to the right, and we're now gonna edit our sync times over here. Now you'll notice in this view, we can't actually change our sync time preferences. And that's why they're inside a group, because we can actually change these preferences with our second knob over here. So what we're gonna do is map the bottom times to the time macro as well. So now we have six knobs all mapped to the same macro. In this map setting, we're gonna come up to time, we're gonna edit these values. L 16th, you can start at zero and max out at 42. The next one will start at 42 and max out at 110. And then the final one will start at 84 and of course max out at 127. If you close the second macro group, you'll be able to see the delays. And then with time, you'll be able to see what's occurring. So we're starting on sync one, three and six here. As we increase the time, these all move independently. So you have different types of delay occurring. We want to be able to select these devices and that's machine type and that's actually selecting between delay, the filter on that delay and filter delay. Yeah, it's on screen. I'm going to open up this macro list again and I'm going to rename macro 5 as signal moving and rename macro 6 as multi. I'm going to select filter and map that to signal moving. We're going to right click the bypass for filter delay and map that to multi. As we did before, we're going to map these both to the same knob this time machine type. This is really cool. So inside map for the delay group, what we're gonna do is find that signal moving. And I think mapping this between 30 and 60 is really nice. The filter delay, you can start at 60 and keep it at 127 in the max column. Once again, close that macro group so you can see what occurs. And in machine type, what you'll see is the filter turns on, it then turns off and the filter delay turns on. So if we keep this all the way left, we're just using the standard delay. In the middle, we're using filter, and all the way to the right, we're using filter delay. Finally, we've just got to set up the heads. If you made it this far in the video and didn't just cave and grab the Patreon device, I really commend you. You're almost through the hardest bit. For this setting, we're gonna have the characters of these two devices come on and turn off at different times. I'll choose any other available macro and rename it to heads. And I'm gonna map the ping pong input L of the filter delay, and then input R of the filter delay. Inside the map settings, we're gonna have 2564 for ping pong, 55127 for the filter delay L, and the second input will be 64127. You can just leave this as it is. We can map this heads knob to our heads macro, close that macro list, and as we cycle through, we're just using the delay. We've got the delay with ping pong, the ping pong delay with the first L filter, 
ping pong turns off, and then we're using the filter delay, just L and R. Scroll to the right a little bit and set your delay to 100% wet with the dry all the way to zero. You might want to decrease those pans a little bit. So I go about 16L, 16R. I'm gonna keep the volume at four for this one, but for the second one, I'm gonna set it to 2.8. My filters are gonna look a little bit like this. So just left of center at 704 Hertz and just right of center at 2.07 kilohertz. With my filter on the left, you might have to make it enabled. What I'm gonna do is just drag this down to about 915 Hertz with a width of about 2.5. Everything from here on out is much more straightforward. I promise you for that. So the last thing for the delay is setting up those repeats. And this is essentially feedback. So we're gonna right click our feedback. I'm just gonna choose macro 16. And then we also have feedback over here, which will do the same. You should be used to this by now. We're gonna go into our map settings. The first delay feedback is just gonna be left as is, but the second delay feedback is gonna go 21 and 35. And this last one over here is actually gonna go 21, 18. We can right click macro 16 and set that to repeats. Close that macro view. And we can see as we increase repeats here, it increases the feedback. On the second filter delay, as we increase that feedback, it goes up on the top one and down on the bottom one. Hey, so we can minimize that for now. And if you haven't already, do make sure you save. Next up, we need a spring reverb. We'll best dial in the El Capistan's vibe, but do do it to your own taste. It sounds like El Capistan is only mixing in the dry, wet mix. So if you want to improve upon this, you can by being able to control the decay time too. So dry, wet, that's gonna go over to spring here. And I'm just gonna change a couple of the settings. Pre-delay to 15 milliseconds. We're gonna turn our attack up as well, just a few milliseconds, and then bring our feedback down to about 35. We're also gonna dial in the EQ a little bit and just make it a little bit warmer. And then you can go ahead and close that. We've done the whole top row now, so let's just carry this on in order. We're gonna to come to wow and flutter. So what we need for this is our first chorus ensemble device. We're just gonna turn this on, right click dry wet, and map that to wow and flutter. That is a nice, simple one. We can dial in a little bit of warmth as well if you like the vibe. I like it on about 1%. Next up is tape crinkle, and this is one that I've prepared earlier, like a good chef, just because it's a little bit fiddly. But essentially, you're just gonna do what you did before, take a chorus ensemble, shaper, put it in a group, and when that's turned on, you're gonna have two chains, once again, chorus ensemble here, and then a blank chain for the dry signal. Set up that chain selector, and then right click that to map to the first and only macro here. Our chorus ensemble, we can put to about 0.8 dB with a warmth of like maybe 2%, but it's not too important. And then our shaper is gonna be mapped to the rate of the chorus ensemble. I like to turn the jitter way up and the rate way up as well. You'll also map the chorus ensemble and the bypass of the shaper to that chain selector as well. As you turn this to the right, you'll see that the chorus ensemble kind of goes wild and that's what gives it that kind of weird tape twang that is that kind of tape crinkle sound. So let's go ahead and map that chain selector to tape and crinkle. Next up, we've got low end contour, one of the easiest ones to set up. We're gonna turn on our EQ8 and we're gonna set the frequency to low end contour. It's just a high pass frequency. Looking at El Capistan's low end contour, it looks like it draws things off to about 150. But just to be safe, I'm gonna do 175. But again, do this to taste. So we come over to map, low end contour, and the max is gonna be 175. Tape age, this one's really cool. You can use cabinet to cycle through sizes and you get a similar effect to El Capistan. So we can right click the bypass, set that to tape age, and then right click the speaker and set that to tape age as well. 
come over to map. We've got two things here and our device on is gonna come on about 10. So we'll be off to begin with and then we can cycle through the different devices, nice and easy. So last up before in and out, we've got tape bias. And I think it's by far the coolest thing in here. It's kind of like distortion to affect this imaginary tape. I used an amp because saturation and distortion just wasn't getting me there. So we're gonna turn this amp on. We're gonna set output to dual. I'm gonna turn the gain all the way up, volume almost all the way down. Bass is gonna be all the way up, middle just off center, treble all the way down. And for what it's worth, we're gonna set this to heavy. And then you can map dry wet to tape bias. Finally, we've got our input signal and I'm gonna map the gain of utility to in. I'm gonna set the minimum to five dB and then the maximum to 35. I find that this just allows you to hear the wet effects just a little bit better. And then finally, our out signal is gonna be these two here and we'll map those to out. So now you know, if you want to pay $79 for a fancy UI, go right ahead. But if you want all of the tools and more for free, this is how you do it. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more like this in the future, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you as always for stopping by and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.